problem. Um, again, as I mentioned, you're going to have to, in addition to just factoring and multiplying and dividing, we also have to make sure we can subtract, right? Now, if we're subtracting, think about it like this way. If I had 3 minus you know, x squared over 3, if I wanted to combine those, I got to make sure I have common denominators, right? So I'd have to multiply this by 3 over 3. So therefore, it'd be 9 over 3 minus x squared over 3. So therefore, it's 9 minus x squared over 3. right? That's how you do with numbers. And if any time you get stuck, feel free to replace cosines, sines, and all that kind of stuff with variables. All right? Because you just want to, the algebra is exactly the same. But I understand when you look at this, this looks a lot more crazy than, than that does. And that's something you should be familiar with. But this is something new, but it's the exact same operations. We're just now applying it to our trigonometric functions. So if I was going to do this, what I need to do is I know that the least common multiple or the least common denominator is cotangent of x. So therefore, this already has cotangent of x. But over here, I don't, so I have to multiply. So by multiplying cotangent of x on top and bottom, I now obtain cotangent squared of x minus cosecant squared of x, all divided by the cotangent of x. Anybody have any questions on that? I just combine the fractions in one. OK. So now I have cotangent squared minus cosecant squared. Now, when looking at these, um, again, I see the squareds. I can rewrite these in terms of sines and cosines if I'd like to, um, or using my reciprocal identities. But I also know that cotangent and cosecant are related to each other by the Pythagorean identities. So remember, the Pythagorean identity is, what's right over here, 1 plus cotangent, of, cotangent squared of x equals cosecant squared of x. So why don't I just rewrite? cosecant squared of x as 1 plus cotangent. Okay. So by doing that, I now have cotangent squared minus 1 plus cotangent squared of x divided by cotangent of x. Okay. Now, by applying distributive property, I now, by applying distributive property, that's now going to be subtraction, and that's now going to be a subtraction. Right? So now I have cotangent, minus, cotangent squared minus cotangent squared. Well, that subtracts to 0. And then I have negative 1. Where? Where did I <laughs> It's I just distributed the minus 1 and to the minus cotangent. So then those two are going to Subtract to 0. Like one? Yeah, negative 1 times 1, negative 1 times cotangent squared. So now those delete out and I'll, or subtract to 1. I'm just left with negative 1 over cotangent of x. And now we see 1 over cotangent of x. I know when cotangent is in the denominator, by applying the reciprocal, I can rewrite that as a negative tangent of x. That would be your final answer. OK, cool. Any other questions? Good? Yes? So that is going back to your co-function identities. Um, you guys just